So I had a plan with my next two YouTube videos upcoming. I was going to first start with uh, why I bought the Razer Blade 15. It was a big mistake. And then I was going to do a video on the M1 MacBook Pro. But instead, I'm doing this one because, well, Adobe Premiere blessed us with a new beta, something that we weren't expecting to see until like the first quarter of 2021. So spoilers, I got the M1 MacBook Pro and I love it. And I wasn't expecting to see this beta version of Premiere until later. So I was ready to buckle down and just rely on Final Cut Pro for most of my projects. However, I went into the Adobe Creative Cloud yesterday just to make sure all my apps were up to date clicked on beta just to check and see if there was anything different because beforehand Photoshop was the only beta app listed. And I fully expected to see that when I went into the page, but then to my surprise, I saw Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, Premiere Rush, Audition, and maybe one more, I'm not sure. But I was shocked because there was no news about that, no Instagram posts that I saw, no emails, no forums, no notifications and they just slipped it in there right under all of our noses and I downloaded it immediately. And so in this video, I wanna talk about my experience with it, um, whether or not I think that it's actually made some differences and I'm really excited to see what's going on with it. Okay, so right here I have the M1 MacBook Pro. I'm gonna turn on my screen recording um, so you guys can see what is going on with it. Right now I'm at 100% battery, so we will be tracking the battery performance of it because that's something that's pretty important to me um, when it comes to laptop performance and app optimization is, especially with the M1 Mac and the Silicon, Apple Silicon, Big Sur, um, all, all these changes that Apple have been implementing, the biggest things are, yes, performance, speed, power, efficiency, playback, all those things that are very important as video editors, but also, battery life because one of the biggest claims that Apple have made regarding these new these new chips is that they're really battery efficient especially when using the optimized apps so we're gonna see if that's actually true all right so we are recording I'm gonna go into Adobe Premiere Pro the beta it's got a blueprint design on it um, and I only used it for like five minutes yesterday so this is my first time like really working with it um, and I did, it crashed on me once, but then the app didn't close. Like I got the error report and it was like, send report to Adobe. You can choose to do it or not, but the app didn't close out when I hit send. So, um, I don't know what kind of crash that was, but I noticed some performance buffs. Like look at the scrubbing. Pretty good. So I'm going to be editing the video that I was planning on uploading. The one where I talk about my gaming laptop and my transition over to the M1 MacBook. I'll be editing this in the beta version of Premiere so that you guys can kind of see just exactly what is going on with the changes. And it doesn't seem to me that a lot of things have actually happened with this, uh, with this update, with this beta version from what I saw in the learn more, like what's new. So new changes, you're all caught up, all changes. Um, enable media replacement. I don't see how that really involves M1. New captions. Also, I don't I don't see how that really changes it. Time code improvements uh, for arbitrary frame rates. Hmm. Changing color from red to 5K. I don't have that. Copy media to share location. So this is like the really from all the changes. Like I guess bug fixes, sure. But from all the changes that the beta presents, this is the only one that has to do with any of the M1 optimization from what I observe. Uh, and that being export times are more consistent and improved. So let me just like figure out, cause it does seem that scrubbing and playback is much better. Like we're at full res and it shouldn't really be this good because yeah, we're not dropping any frames and that looks great. Um, granted this is 4K H.264 footage, so it's not the uh, really rough H.264. Oh, what? It happened. It just happened. It said some report. It crashed, and then it didn't, it didn't actually crash. Uh, hmm. But do make sure to save your work. So playback's great. I'm curious. We'll test out the, the export. So let's, let's just get this going here. Um, I'm going to do my regular export settings. So I'll just drop this to the desktop, I guess because, oh wait, no, 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 no. Because if I do it to the desktop, 
it will probably export faster than if I were to do it to the external SSD, just because um, the M1 SSD is nuts blazingly fast. So for an actual like real world use, this is what I would do. So we will throw that there. I will call this just test. So before the before the beta version came out, I, uh, when I was in Premiere, I didn't export at all for this project. Uh, I was just working in Premiere for about two hours, and it took away from it took about forty five percent of the battery away in two hours, which is I guess comparable to what the Intel MacBooks would have performed because I was running the Intel version of Premiere. So that makes sense to me uh, why it took so much battery, but at this rate with two percent while I'm exporting, because exporting, like I said, punishes your uh, battery life more than just editing does. Um, from my testing, from my experience, this is looking very promising. Oh, yo, the, the video is actually black. Wow. Okay. Um, now I'm curious. I'd like to try it on the actual SSD, on the M1 SSD, because I do know that it is much faster than my um, Samsung T7. So we'll put it on this SSD as the desktop. Maybe beta actually fixed that. So maybe you don't have to put that LUT on because if you do, it makes it black. So I'm gonna hope that they fix that. And we're at the same settings, 40, uh, 40 megabits per second and 4K. And it still says my estimated file size is just disgustingly massive. I hope that's not true. Um, I'm actually gonna check the file size of this one because it said it was 81 gigs in the estimation uh, window. And it ended up, what? I'm so confused. One megabyte? All right, I did that so wrong. So don't add a lot when you're exporting. Don't do it. Uh, this, I started the timer. Honestly, the temperature performance of this, of this computer, the thermals are incredible. If I was doing this on my razor blade, which is not behind me. <laughs> if I was doing this on my razor blade or even a previous MacBook Pro, like we would be hitting... 99, 100 degrees Celsius, uh, pretty much the second that we started the export, but we're only at 75, that's just nuts. I'm really liking the performance, I'm liking what I'm seeing, and RAM is doing well, same thing here. How are we doing on the CPU? And of course, Activity Monitor and other uh, monitoring apps such as TG Pro will affect your RAM and whatnot. Not entirely sure like where the where the te throttling temperature point is on the uh, new M1 chips. Probably somewhere closer to the triple digits, I would assume. But uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure about that. See, I'm not so worried about all the details that come with the Premiere Pro beta. I'm mostly excited because when it came to optimization, right out of the floodgates, basically, DaVinci Resolve had it available for their program, the optimization with the M1, and Final Cut obviously was optimized immediately, and Premiere was like the third one just sitting out outside of the fence, and I was really nervous about that because I do a lot of work in Premiere, and it does enable me to do things that I can't necessarily do in Final Cut because I don't know how, and in, especially in DaVinci because I don't know how, and I was worried that I would have to learn DaVinci, which wouldn't be a bad thing, like that would be a blessing, um, but I was worried that I would have to like switch over because of um, this, not cripple, but just the fact that there wasn't an optimized Premiere. And I didn't want to have to deal with 45 minute export times. Um, just to check in with you guys right now, we're at 72% and the time elapsed has been five minutes even right now. And so checking in on the battery life, we're at 93% and we've been using Premiere basically exclusively exporting for around 20 minutes. So when you look at the, the demanding tasks we've been doing here for the past 20 minutes, 93% uh, losing 7% battery is not all that concerning to me uh, because normally when you're editing, you're not exporting for like 50 minutes. Obviously with battery life, this is the worst case scenario. We're exporting, doing the most demanding thing that you could be doing in within Premiere and we've been doing it pretty much constantly for 20 minutes and the really cool thing is that I did the math with this worst case scenario of battery life. If you were to export straight for 4.76 hours, that's how long the battery life would last before the laptop would die. And when you compare it to what Apple said, oh, it's done. Uh, 
took seven minutes writing to the SSD. It, it actually doesn't seem to make a difference which SSD you use or uh, as long as they're both like relatively fast. I'm excited for this. Holy cow, this, this changes things quite a bit for me because now I have actually the option to use Premiere. Um, let me know what you guys think of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was kind of a quick one off the cuff. I didn't script it or plan anything out really for it because I just saw the update yesterday, hopped right on it and wanted to make a video talking about it before uh, it becomes irrelevant. So download it for yourself if you have the M1 MacBook or the Mac Mini. Let me know what you guys think about the whole state of the Apple Silicon. Not controversy, but just the new innovation. Uh, it's pretty exciting in my opinion. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. We'll see you in the next video talking about gaming laptops and Intel versus M1.